You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is, is a day that could change the rest of your life. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food and it tastes, uh, it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine, your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out, uh, out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school, after all, and University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home and find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you uh, up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but you will not believe what happened to me uh, at school after school yesterday. I went on a date! I think I believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him, you better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me, so I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know a, a little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving? I said that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker. <laughs> and now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell... Uh, tell her whole story. However, bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too. Back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened but the emotional connection? Wowzers. Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. Being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, I don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not qu quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great! I'll order you up one right away! I'll have my swirly with Sprinkles, please. <laughs> Sprinkles is a, uh, is a dog and a treat. Aww. You can get your swirly dipped. You can get your swirly dipped, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Mm. Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. There's that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Ugh. You've got some nerve, Theo, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I never give up. Ever. 
Colonel Sanders arrives just uh, uh, as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is, every, is everyone excited for the final day of school? Theo, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing? Complimenting her? What about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey sauce? It was clear that your passion about how your food is... Uh, it, it was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. It's a lot of words to say it was bland. Excuse me, Theo, I'm more than capable enough to speak for myself. <sighs> Maybe you could tell me more about your thoughts as we walk to class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Theo. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see a uh, Ashley for who, for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself for, uh, from how slighted you feel by th that interaction with Ashley, you take out uh, the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa! That's that book! It looks like bad news! It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grim, uh, grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if they weren't really powerful? I, uh, I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open the, the page covered with arcane warnings, cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edges of the page. It could, it, I, I could use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That's way drastic. Couldn't you do something else? Like, anything else? Not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine, it is drastic, but desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you, and a pretty good excuse to try it out. I'm not gonna do it. My thing is that try or fail, I'm gonna trust that he cares about me, and that Ashley is gonna sweep him out from under my feet. So, I'm not doing it. Take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you, it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up as he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry, reach for some old homework to give him a... Reach for some old homework to give, him, to give to him as a snack. It'll also be rather unpredictable, especially Sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. Sprinkles stops in his tracks. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When, when, he, when you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window <laughs> of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence! I told you never to come back here! Terrence! I will destroy you! Terrence! Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying uh, off of his face. The squirrel looks over but doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again! After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in, in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. Ahem! I apologize for that outburst. That actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Theo, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom, you see. 
Before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkle is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class! You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language for, uh, of mechanized noises. Where? No! You had to show off to your cool kid friends Jeff and Joan. J and J forever! Watch us form a triangle in the middle of, uh, in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Well, yeah, it doesn't make it, uh, make it make it a great date. Beep. Whirr. Uh. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Sad beep. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of, out of the gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in, him in his tracks. Beep. No amount, of, no amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. Clank burps out a completely deep-fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep-fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was... unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. Before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul behind, uh, nearby in need of, of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Uh. Okay? I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug, spilling several drops of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that, in front of everyone? Her tiny, uh, her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke. Even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through the final test and hit the carpool lane to success city. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe. Sort of. But I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it. And a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop, if it's not Pop or Clank, or anyone else we, you met that you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and, and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You decided to, to head to the arena early to prepare a dish. To practice a dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will. A test of courage, a test of talent, and a chance to beat the pants off Van Van, the supposed Man Man, and his eviler counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through, the, uh, through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on, Theo's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven, but as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Thea, what are you doing here? There's still a lot of time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. 
making... I, I, I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot by has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around mm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were cooking something delicious. You'd usually ha happily share your food with anyone who is hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You said that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when... The oven timer goes off behind you. Uh, I'm gonna fess about the practice dish. Okay! Okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know, my nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all-butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no! Is it burning? <laughs> no. I can smell that it was made with a help with a heap and helping of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. Moment of truth. Wow. <gasps> it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no ground rules, that is! Except to cook with everything you've got! You step up for the for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes the dishes that'll pull, uh, pull you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to, do, to go big going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be uh, harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts uh, starts at, 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 at start, starts at a, a full ten out of ten, with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. <laughs> wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken a, a, as he levitates through the air. Egg wash. Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, uh, uh baster blaster. Van flexes his pectorals as he chops o uh, open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. Ashley <laughs> scoops up her pastries off a tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. Even Clank gets into it. Five dial pressure point cooking <laughs> chicken cooking technique. Wait, did when did Clank learn English? It's a singularity. As was foretold, we mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising will take us all. South East Rock. Then quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out to the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to, to use some dark magic to turn to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. If you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic, do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm gonna do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, Theo. Miriam notices too. Aww. And I've always believed in you, Theo, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice Miriam is at your station, cheering you on. Miriam, what about, what, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but... Maybe 
Medium tosses a handful of spices directly into your bo into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. It's the secret ingredient. Oh no! No! Miriam, don't please! <laughs> However, she doesn't know that you lied up and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. As I, Steve, a spork monster. Steve? Wait, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We spork monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off. But you have conjured Steve. I hate to battle. So I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Oh, hey. You're in the middle of a crazy cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. Crazy kids in your culinary skills really impressed me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve, the spork monster, notices that you've got the grimoire stashed beneath your, your cooking station. I see that you're up to crisscross... I see what you're up to. Crisscrossed some magical items and actually summoned me, huh? Yeah, you guessed it. Sort of. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles into the, in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a, uh, be a top chef. Actually, you know, when I was just a little spork pup, back in, in the old country, you can feel spork... You can feel Spork Monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time at Monster School when I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class and then I woke up. He talks, he talks a serious glare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered a huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. I'm not giving up. I'm gonna summon all my power from within. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange. It's called very energy flows through your body. I'm the legendary Super Cheese. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been, have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Theo! You are the chosen one! You will avenge me! The power you'd been summoning immediately fades back out. You're interrupting my inspiring monologue! Sorry! My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I'll show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know what? <laughs> that with this power, you can do anything. Except turn back time. Which would be super useful because you, you were while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear Theo. You may have suffered some setbacks. But all, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned uh, his, his support. I've, watched, I've been watching you all day. I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What? A guy. Oh, my senpai. Colonel Sanders unfolded a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And, besi uh, and besides, sometimes unexpected combinations have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you... Are you suggesting? If we combine forces... We can form the perfect food, <laughs> the perfect food union. Time's up, students. The time expired. 
It's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare, prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. <laughs> I'm flying! Sounds like it's coming from the broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the, by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from that right now! Let me guess. Did Fan Fan have something to do with this? When something... When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. It looks like Pop Pop is eliminated from the challenge. Seeing how we didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks. Pranks? Plank! Where did that pressure hooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature word, beep, or, or other onomatopoeia, but there's no tone. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles and savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. It's so teeny tiny Naruto Maki. I spy. <laughs> is, is that a teeny tiny Naruto Maki? I spy a photo on its itsy bitsy bowl. Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles. And some green tea I made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink t uh, dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on! I'm not the only one of those dogs. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. And even, I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with, with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Theo. For helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now, describe your dish. I made... <laughs> uni over smooth egg custard with an axion urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second, differently colored type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkle. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni. But he can't get his nose close enough on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the cusser to slosh around. Woof woof. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Grrr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Youch! My tongue! The professor appears to be having a large reaction to the sting. I can't eat this! I keep poking my tongue! Disqualified! A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving a, a, a food in a bowl made of needles could make, a, a, make it difficult to eat? Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. 
disqualified for glamour? Don't discount Trimplicity. This isn't the last you've heard of me! Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps at a bowl of, laps at a, a, a bowl of milk. I know, I know, yeah, I have a dog and I drink milk, get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now, describe your dish. I made orange blossom, Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected it by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask you to please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be dis uh, to be a, uh, a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school. Got toast in your ears or something, Theo? I told you, it's a display piece. Actually, I must say, it is beautiful. However, th this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. And I did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an, a, an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to a college for, of eating, school for the hungry. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the, the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you! And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be a fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me, either. If this, cl if this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself! You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has, beco has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing the and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh. I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I'd s I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this. This thing and completely blow me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes in the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to be, tran uh, they all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are, are drawn back in by its magnificent fragrance. When they gaze upon the mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on. How could they, ever, how could they be better than this one? Now the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return to class one, uh, for one last assignment, to get their groove on. The cafeteria has, it has been completely redecorated in order to serve as a site for the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor, uh, uh, decor seems, to, uh, seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dog is in the house! <laughs> you know that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they're committed to, they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were uh, while they were villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not, <laughs> not another haunting. There are ghosts allowed at graduation. 
It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. That was a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh. Amusing. If I ever was to gather, it's the Spark Monster. He, he is totally mellowed out. Everyone, the, the Spark Monster is no more. From here on out, I'd prefer everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. Student tries to finish what he was, what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to sport. Sorry, party monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam, for, for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in, in her cooking, and you know she's gonna do great. A red carpet rolls out across the flo the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. You, who could command such an uh, such an entrance? It's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking on the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma. So we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the, for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the Chancellor of such and such. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of spur uh, sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa! He's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank. And I am not of this Earth. I am actually from a far away planet in another dimension. What? What? Hmm. I actually feel like I knew it the whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? Uh, I... I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote myself to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear that she's managed to, sur to surpass you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just at the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. He didn't get to be the most famous chicken. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in history, uh, in history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. Oh my god, that was so fun. <laughs> what? No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Leo? I... I couldn't help but wonder. Was our final exam team up purely an act of strategy? Carried out by two cunning chefs? Or... Was it something more? I'm afraid I can't answer that question directly. Instead, I'd like to ask you a question of my own. May I have this dosy -si dough? -si Colonel Sanders extends his hand to you, and you feel a surge of energy jump off the tip of his fingers. His hand, the hand of a master chef, so dedicated to the craft of fine cookery, so tender, yet refined, so milky smooth, Fingers like lightly battered drumsticks, turned in flour, soaked in buttermilk, and dusted with exotic spices. But they do not reach for tongs, a knife, or even a spork. Tonight they reach... for you. 
and though our feet may tire of dancing, I believe that this is just the beginning of our steps together. Colonel Sanders, I... Will you not only join me on the dance floor, but in the kitchen as my co-chef and partner in both business and in life? You gasp. Could it be? Is he really saying? Me? And, and you? Together? Ever since I met you, my dream has changed. It's not enough to simply open the world's greatest chain of fried chicken restaurants. No. Even then, my life would be incomplete without you by my side. So, what do you say? Partner? I, I say... I love you, Colonel Sanders. The end. Hell yeah! <laughs> that was so fucking good! Ah! Oh, that... That was wholesome. Alrighty. Well, that is going to do it for me. Uh, for this series. This has been a really fun uh, little simulator. Uh, a little bit longer than I expected it to be, but if you haven't checked it out, I'll leave a link in the description. It's it's so fun. It's so goofy. It's so zany. I uh, <laughs> may have destroyed my voice in the process a little bit. <clears throat> Ding Colonel's really growly, super manly voice is uh, hard to do for... How long have I been re recording? It's been it's been over two hours, but uh, I'm willing to pull through because I love you all, <laughs> and I most especially love you, Colonel Sanders. Also, you, Ashley, you're very thick, mm. very impressive. But <laughs> that's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, feel free to share it uh, with your friends. Um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. You guys have been. Really knocking it out of the park with that recently. I, I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Um, so without further ado, roll the outro. Hey, congratulations, you made it to the end. Why well, leave a like or a comment in the comment section below while you're at it? Or subscribe and join the Cub Collective today. That being said, I want to thank you all for watching, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Goodbye for now.